where I would do a lot of storage stuff. So I'm a big believer that if it's if it's content that you want around for a long time, the same way I would pay to get a professional headshot done, uh, because I know I'm going to use uh, this bad boy over and over and over again for everything anyone ever asks for me. So I'll pay for that. But uh, same with a website video. If it's going to be on my website, I'm going to pay to have somebody make it because that video is going to be around for a long time. But for a lot of other stuff, I'm a big believer in capturing uh, people, what you do, who you are, and being able to edit it yourself. Now, there's a skill that comes with that, uh, and there's a, a talent that goes into it, um, but uh, that's all part of the learning curve. Uh, when I don't do that, I am a festival director for the Dublin Smartphone Film Festival, so I run my own film festival, which I've done for about six, seven years, which is all aimed at filmmakers around the world um, shooting movies using mobile phones. So it's all about uh, accessible technology and the democratization. I can never say that word. About <laughs> making filmmaking open to everyone so you don't have some person who spent 20 grand on a camera and everyone goes oh my god your film's going to be amazing because you know after seven years running a film festival i can tell you that you can very much polish a turd and anyone who spent 20 grand on a camera does not necessarily mean they're going to make a good movie uh okay cool right let's get into it guys question for you quick question though i'm just going to do a whip around very quick brian i'm going to ask you straight off the gate uh what kind of stuff do you struggle with do you struggle a bit with video do you struggle a bit with putting yourself out there on social media are you okay with it I'm completely starting afresh, Robert. Um, I've started on the new Frontiers Phase 1 programme. It's an Enterprise Ireland uh, sponsored programme. So I'm just getting ideas together. And at some stage, I will uh, I may be looking at uh, doing putting on up some content onto the website. Cool. Perfect. Anyone else? Uh, Manu, we've spoken before. What, do you, what kind of stuff do you struggle with? Or do you? Well, mostly I struggle, I think, with, you know, um, you know, I'm pretty comfortable talking to people, um, yeah. you know, I lecture, so, but, you know, camera is always very different, it's, uh, you know, being in front of the camera, behind the camera is okay, but in front of the camera is very uh, self-aware, even being on camera in conference calls or whatever, you know, video meetings, I'm still very like, hmm, so, it's interesting yeah. in that sense. It's funny you say that. I'm going to take an eight. I'm going to take a broad sweeping statement and say that the age group of this group is more in line with me. And 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 so we're we're kind of non digital natives. So we live in this world where when a camera is turned on, everyone feels like they have to be a, an RT news correspondent for some reason, and everyone becomes quite stilted. Hey, my name is Rob, and my business is great. And one of the reasons I love LinkedIn is because LinkedIn is ninety five percent. Hey. My name is Rob, and because everyone is so deathly afraid of, of 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 because of the the connotations and the this idea that you have to act a certain way on, on LinkedIn of all platforms, so it's great. Which means the level it's a low a low bar to exceed people's expectations. If you shoot a video where you're walking in the street on LinkedIn, I guarantee if someone scrolls through LinkedIn, they'd be like, "Oh my god, that video has motion and it blew me away." And um, so LinkedIn is is a is a very interesting place because the the bar I think to to get him uh, to to make traction and to get noticed is quite much lower than if you're on say tiktok and you're competing with you know uh 14 year olds who grew up with phones that are taped to their hands and they're just amazing do you know what i mean like i just there's 14 year olds out there who understand the rhythms of editing that i spent five six seven years learning in college i teach classes and i'm talking to kids and i'm like hey what happens there and they're like oh the person walks there and then we cut to that i was like why and they just know inherently and i spent years trying to figure out the, the rhythms behind it so um I'm 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 giving fourteen year olds a, a a broad sweeping. They're amazing. I'm sure I've also worked with ones who have no breeze. So um, each for their own. So, uh, perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna just jump into some. Can you guys do me a favor? Can you? There's three dots on the top right hand side of my image next to mute. Can you click on that and can you hit pin? The reason being is that I use a different software, and if I, if you don't do that, I come across as very small, and you won't be able to see it um two seconds no we're not at the end i'm just trying to get to something here okay i am going to pop myself in here as well where am i cool we'll pop myself in here so guys before we start quick question can everyone see this full screen now yeah so quick question other than the emoji face does anyone want to tell me a couple of things that they think about this picture? Can you tell me a few? Can you tell me what this person does as a job? Open to all questions. No. Nope. Oh, hold on a second. Let me go back. That timer's on. That's too quick. Hold on a second. Anyone just, take a guess? She doesn't want to be seen. Well, yeah, that's why she had her face surgically designed to look like an emoji. <laughs> but the, uh, the oh, let's go back 10 minutes and see that. So uh, anyone taking a, a punt at what this person does as a job? 
A writer? Okay. Who guessed? Anyone else? Teacher. Okay, anyone else? Both wrong, but you know, you took in an office. Why an office? Uh, well, just looking through the windows, there seems to be desks and chairs, and it looks like a waiting room or something with yeah. a circular chair. <laughs> Okay, so this is, this is a still from someone's video. Now, I covered their face, but they don't know I used this, and I'm deathly afraid that one day somebody is going to stumble upon <laughs> it and know what they do. Anyone else want to take any other guess about who this person, what this person does with the job? Uh, maybe they might be a copywriter because there's a lot of books around and they don't have any other clutter. Okay, so great. Uh, these are all really good guesses. Uh, the, probably the main argument I'd say is this is a video for social media. And depending on what channel it is, generally we would not spend 30 to 60 seconds examining this image to figure out what this person does as a job. There's also no captions with this video. So there's no way for you to ascertain straight off the gate what this person does, let alone what this person's saying. Is there anything about this particular frame, this image that you think you might not like? Is there anything you like? Is there anything you dislike? I hate the emoji face. Hate the emoji face. Well, I think it was a terrible idea for her to get that tattoo and I told her so, but she was adamant. Uh, anyone else? Anything as about a, as a As a photographer, I just hate that there's no symmetry. It's all weird angles and all that. Whereas, you know, but that's, again, that's coming from me as so, a photographer. Still, still, still valid. Still same, same methodology. Um, does, what, how do you feel about this person? What an emoji face? Do you think this still projects confidence? I was going to say, like, and I don't want, like, the scene that it's at and the what she's wearing and the position of an iPad, I just, I'm not instilled with confidence that they're yeah. going to be an expert in what they're talking about. It doesn't seem that, believable. Yeah, Eva, that is probably the best answer anyone's ever given me for this. <laughs> that is spot on. She's not projecting confidence. What this person does, I will tell you, is she is a digital skills trainer. So she lives in Italy, which is why the, uh, the she has this glorious house. Uh, but she teaches businesses on how to kind of get online. I think where she works or the region she lives in, a lot of businesses are still quite analog. So she teaches business how to get online. But the example you give me is spot on. You're scrolling through social media. I think if you're on Instagram, you're consuming images at 65,000 times per second. Okay, So you only have a few seconds to really get someone's attention. And you also only have a few seconds for them to ascertain whether you're an authority on a subject and what it is you do. So optics are important. And the optics of this video to me scream, she's too small in the frame. As Manning pointed out, there's no symmetry. She's lost in the middle of the frame. Like I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm in the middle of my frame. I consume the entire thing. I have a light put up behind me. All that is is a light I turn on. The only reason that light exists behind me, by the way, is because it makes the room deeper. That's it. It doesn't light anything. If I turn it off, you know, that's what the room looks like. It's a lot flatter and it's a lot as nice, right? So the only reason that is there is the prop light because it makes it look more interesting. But I'm very conscious in this small square and whenever I'm recording a video that I've only got a fraction of a second. The reason my whole, in, my whole Zoom feed looks like this is because every time I log on to a Zoom call, even before somebody asks me what I do, I want them to think straight away that I know what I'm talking about. This is all like aesthetics to look like, oh, he knows something about something. It's very techy. It's very whatever. So this is my kind of visual calling card for when I'm I'm, I'm out there and um, doing this particular for Zooms. Now, I do record videos from this setup as well. But to go back to the example of this person here, this person hasn't done that. Uh, they're trying to instill through the actual videos that they are a trustworthy, confident person who understands their way around digital things like that. It's funny somebody mentioned the books. The books are all distracting. They make you think something else. If you're spending any fraction of time on it, it's distracting. It doesn't make, actually now that someone said she's a writer, it feels like she's a writer. Uh, and it the whole thing is very messy. Would anyone have any suggestions for what they would do differently? Now, if she's going to train people about going online or digital, I would expect her to be working in that environment. Um, and the single laptop is very sanitary. Yeah, and it's distracting when complac placed with the rest of the, the, the house. And again, the windows, the symmetry, all that sort of stuff, there's too much to look at. There's too, your eyes are pulled all over the place. 
And again, we have the luxury of dissecting this for three or four minutes. Most times people will not. Uh, also the tripod, if anyone is using it, the camera's up too high. Um, so the reason being is that we're now looking down at her, which makes her feel quite small in the frame. I'm just having a quick look here. Everyone on this call seems to have pretty good placement for their camera levels. Just be mindful that when you're talking into your camera, if you're talking down into it, again, it's the reverse of that. It makes you feel kind of superior, like you're talking down. It's a very oppressive way to talk down to somebody. So it's all about making sure your camera is at eye level and you're directly engaging. Louise, I would say you are directly engaging with your camera and you are so far winning the camera wars because uh, you're probably the nicest distance away and you're directly engaging. Uh, Jennifer, yours is good, but I would argue you're a tiny bit too far away from your camera. And um, so you seem kind of small in the frame. So um, that's just to give you an idea of when you're going to press record. There's a thousand different things that people ascertain before you've even started speaking. Now, I would say the sound on this video that I'm showing you here was terrible. So that was the final nail in the coffin because she was too far away and she wasn't using a microphone. So you couldn't hear. So the audience collectively had to lean forward and already they're confused about what it is she does. Already they're confused about why they need to invest time in this. And now what you're asking them to do is lean in. That's where captions are very, very important because, you know, you want to make things as easy as possible. You know, what, one thing you'll probably notice is, I don't know if anyone's scrolling through social media quite regularly, you'll see a handful of quick cuts at the start of a video. Something happens at the start of a video just enough to catch your attention. There's a new phrase, I've no, the new thing I've noticed on Instagram where it's a random image that has nothing to do with the video and it's there for a fraction of a second and it cuts and then somebody pops down and starts talking to the camera. All that is designed to... Uh, it's like jiggling keys in front of a kid. You're just like, look at me, distractions, distractions, distractions. But again, those first 10 seconds, like her video starts like this. Now she doesn't have the emoji face, but you're just already lost in a sea of confusion and the message is lost. And she spent money and time. And that's the important thing. Forget about the money for a second. She spent time putting this together. And if you're going to spend time doing something, it's best to do it to the best you possibly can and to do it in a way that is easily repetitive. So I have this set up here. I'll show you what my camera looks like here just so you can get an idea. Uh, let me go back here. Um, there we go. Let's see if this works. Can everyone see my phone there? So that is my phone connected into a tripod. That tripod is down behind this office counter. It never leaves, okay? That sits there, never move it, never change. I take the phone and I walk away. I come back, I put the phone in. Life is about design. And so the easier you can do something, the easier and more repetitive it is to make. So if I told you you had to move a couch every time you need to use your video, chances are you probably don't want to shoot a video. So chances are you that moving that couch will be the ultimate struggle. You'd be like, oh, to move that couch, where? No, I'm not doing it. So the best thing to do is to set up something that looks polished, looks preferable in your if, if it's in your office or whatever, something that easily reflects what it is you do and then be able to just press record and go and to not be so precious about what you're putting out because at the end of the day, is a sea of noise out there and really what you're trying to get across is consistency. As bad as it sounds, we've come to a stage in the world where um, uh, quantity is outweighing quality to a degree. It's great to have quality, but you almost need to be able to have consistent output. Um, and that can be a difficult and that more so down to idea generation, a lot of times can be the real struggle. Like I could show you how to shoot stuff and edit stuff, but if you can't come up with ideas, you're that's going to be the blocking point. Also, what I would suggest doing is, does anyone familiar with batching? Does anyone not know what batching is? So I have my camera set up here. So rather than sit down and record one video, I'd come up with five ideas and I'd record five videos. So say I, instead of talking for one minute, I'll talk for five minutes about five different topics. And I will say to myself, okay, that's five videos I have put to one side. Now, if you want to post two days a week, then you've covered yourself for two and a half weeks. So if you want to post five days a week, then that'll cover you every week. So it's about sitting down and not, because if I ask you to do videos every day, you, you're going to get caught up in spending too much time doing it and you're not going to want to do it because you're all busy people. You have too much to do. You don't have time to be sitting down and create videos. So if you're going to, you want to put aside some hours, sit down, and you want to do as much of that content in one go as you possibly can and then put it to one side. Generally, I tend to do um, every two weeks, I spend half a day and a Monday just creating content for different platforms. Um, and then I post it all using Hootsuite or Buffer or something like that. 
And then I don't go back to that again for another two weeks. And I have stuff that constantly going out in different platforms and I don't have to think or worry about it, which means I'm okay with it. I'm also a big believer in, 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 in experimentation in real time. Figure out what works, figure out what people respond to what they don't. If you post something and nobody engages with it, then it's a pretty good inflation that you probably shouldn't keep doing it. Maybe change it up, find something that works, streamline it down, go up with three or four different things through a process of A, B testing, what works, what doesn't. Okay, I've landed on four or three types of videos that are really connecting with my audience. Now I'm going to repeat that over and over and over again. If anyone wants to start a TikTok channel, that is the best way to do it. Two to three videos a day for two weeks to build a channel, figure out what works and what doesn't, eliminate the things that don't, add new things in, and eventually you will streamline it down to two or three types of videos that work. And you will just keep repeating them over and over and over again because we are all consistent people and all we want is consistency. And if you are consistent, you will get traction. It'll take time, but you will get traction. So I'm conscious that I'm, I'm trying to cover a lot. Okay, so guys, I want you to do me a quick favor. I want everyone to actually record something for two seconds for me, okay? It doesn't have to be too polished. I just want the camera to be at eye level. You can hold it. There are countless rules we'll be breaking for the purpose of this, but I just want to see if we can do it, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to turn off your Zoom cameras, okay? And I want you to record a video. I want that video to be you talking to the camera, and I want that video to be you talking about something in the room, okay? Something in the room around you. It can be books. It can be anything. Just pick something in the room. Don't hold the camera vertically. Just do me a favor. Hold the camera horizontal for this. So hold it uh, the way you're, I'm looking at you now. Don't hold it like you're posting for reels uh, or stories. We can cover that in a second. I just want you to record for a minute long, 30 to 60 seconds talking about something in the room. Okay. Pause before you start. Press record. Wait, count down five, four, three, two, one, then start talking. And then when you finish talking, hold on for a second, five, four, three, two, one, and then press stop. Okay. And it can be whatever you want. I'm never going to see these unless you want to show them to me. So uh, fire ahead. Okay. So 60 seconds talking about something in the room. Um, and then we'll come back. As I said, if it, you want to talk about books, talk about books. If you want to talk about the window, if you want to talk about how bad the weather is, talk about how bad the weather is. Just something. I normally put a timer on the screen, but I didn't in this case. But... Playing loose and fast with time here, but we're going to say. There. Put a little timer there. So there's a couple of seconds left. Done. Amazing. If anyone's thinking I hate being on camera, just remember everybody here probably thinks they hate being on camera. And anytime you post something online where you're on camera, majority of people will be like, God, I wish I could post more stuff online and be like them on camera. So somebody is always looking over the fence at you. So if you think you're terrible and you do it, chances are other people think they're terrible and are envious of the fact that you did it. So uh, it's just this idea that we're all like, I hate being on camera. Very few people enjoy it. I don't mind it, but it took me years to get used to it. So if anyone's saying, oh, I don't want to record something, I don't like being on camera, you'll get over that. But at the same time, you're talking to an audience generally of people who all don't want to be on camera. So the fact that you did it is very impressive. Okay, so we've got some people coming back. I'm just going to turn off this, get rid of this timer. Um, okay, did anyone find that horrendous? No? Okay. Uh, um, uh, Jennifer, can I ask you, what did you uh, talk about? I basically talked about that I'm recording a video because I'm doing a video recording webinar and that it's only really a small test and I'm trying it out. Okay. And I'm learning awesome. as I go. Very meta. Uh, we'll have to work out something there. Okay, cool. Perfect. Um, uh, Christine, what did you talk about? Uh, I talked about a paperweight that I have in Perfect. my office that Excellent. is shaped like a jellyfish. 
Brilliant. Even better. And Manu, what did you talk about? I talked about, you know, entrepreneurial motivation and how you can, can kind of get yourself going. That's going to be a little harder for what we have planned, but that's okay. We'll work out something. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> so, guys, the next part of this, uh, where are we going? Where am I? I am over here. Okay. So, I actually right. find it quite amusing. You didn't actually say to take it of ourselves. You just said record a video and talk over it. So I just took the picture of the flowers in front of me. <laughs> That's, I should have said of yourself. I apologize. I left that out. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, we'll figure out that in a second, Louise. Okay, I might get you to record something else with you to the camera so we can use it. Uh, okay, so guys, this is uh, the idea of what we're going to do. It's just a brief, basic project just around kind of storytelling and how to make a video a little bit more punchy, okay? And the example I'll give you here, I'm not going to go into A roll and B roll and what it means, okay? But for the most part, with the exception of Louise, it sounds like everyone recorded themselves talking to the camera, okay? So the idea being is if you're sitting there talking to the camera, if I turn to you and I say, I love coffee, coffee is my favorite thing to have every day in the morning, that's fine. It's also not very impactful. So it's easier to show you liking coffee. So anytime you can show something rather than say it, it hammers home that impact a little bit. So if I said to you, I love having coffee each morning and you just saw a shot of me drinking coffee with my voice over it, that really sells that concept to you as an audience more. And it also makes your video faster and easier to look at. And also remember, a lot of these videos go on social media. So a lot of times, most people are consuming that content with no volume on. So if you're talking about how much you love coffee and it's you staring at the camera doing this for 60 seconds, where are we going? So if I'm looking directly at the camera and I'm going, chances are, if I haven't captioned the video, for the most part, you're already gone. You're 14 videos away and you haven't picked up any single thing I've said and you haven't understood what my video is about. So we need to get across our point as if there's no volume and we need to get it across very, very quickly. Okay. So what I want people to do now, if I can, oh, where am I going? Sorry, I have too many things open at once. Uh, oh, where are we on? Okay. All right. So what I want people to do now, okay, and here's my little example. And what I'll do is I'll put myself over this Bruce Springsteen picture. Okay. So for, Anyone who talked about, uh, where are we going? Christine, you talked about the paperweight, so that's a really good example, okay? What I want people to do now is I want people to just get three shots of what it is they were talking about. So Christine, if you're talking about the paperweight, ideally, if you can have a shot of the paperweight, if you can maybe have a shot of you holding the paperweight, yeah? And I don't know, you might want to put the phone down and get a shot of maybe put the phone down the table and have it looking up at you holding the paperweight. So just three shots, 10 seconds each, okay? And what I don't want people to do is I don't want people to go and move the phone around. I want you to take out your phone. I want you to hold it. I want you to press record, count for 10 seconds, stop it, change your angle to whatever it is, press record, count for 10 seconds. So I want three separate clips related to what it is you were talking about, okay? And Joanne, I see you're holding your phone vertically. Is that the way you shot the video? Okay, all right, perfect, that's fine. If you've done it that way, if you've held your phone vertically like this, then shoot all your clips vertically. Does that make sense? So I just want three separate clips, 10 seconds long, showing what it is you were talking about. You don't have to talk over it, you don't have to do anything. Louise, you might need to get a shot, a video of you talking for 10 to 15, 20 seconds about the flower so we can do it in reverse. I don't need any talk. I just need three different clips talking about what, showing whatever object it is you were talking about. Okay, I'll give you guys 30 seconds to, or I'll give you guys 40 seconds to do that. I see a bunch of people are holding it vertically. If that's the way you did it, then do the three videos that way as well.
So let me know if people have um, finished that. Louise, have you finished that? Yeah. Brian, are you, you guys have your cameras on. So you guys, you have sort of done it? Okay. So I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attempt to take you how to edit that video very quickly together. Okay. What I will do is I'll give you a link uh, before you roll your eyes to another Slack channel, a small one. There's not many people in it, but it does have video tutorials built into it, um, which will show you all I'm about to show you now. So you can watch back and, and, and follow through to do it correctly. I'm just conscious of the time. So has everyone shot their clips? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to ask people to do is I'm going to ask people to jump into CapCut. The app you just downloaded. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you this here. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. I don't know how big this is. Somebody told me the other day it seemed quite small, but no one's ever told me it was too small. So does that seem okay? Yeah, I think that, yeah. Okay, cool. So guys, when you log into CapCut, if it's your first time logging into it, you might get a bunch of stuff, advertisement -y things or a bunch of stuff that you're not going to see. But can you let me know when you get to this page here? Now, you won't have any edits. See this thing here? It'll just be a big blue box that says new project. So is anyone on that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what you do is you click on new project. Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to find what this will bring you into is all the videos you have in your phone. Okay. So what I want you to find is I want you to find the 30 to 60 second video you recorded of you talking to the camera. Okay. We'll start with that first. So one in here of me somewhere. I'm just trying to find the video. Okay, so here's a random video of me, okay, that I'll use. All right. So find the video of you just talking straight to the camera. Okay. So when you click on it, it should load it up and bring you into this screen here. Is anyone on this screen here? Anyone not on this screen here? So if everyone's on this screen here, yeah, and you've got your video loaded. Yeah, what I'm doing here now is, I don't know if anyone's familiar, Manu, you might be, or anyone's familiar with photography editing, but essentially what this is here is, this is my video strip, okay? That I've just recorded. Jeez, the rain is so bad. Um, what I was going to say is you guys would have hopefully left a couple of seconds of silence. Remember I was saying leave a couple of seconds of silence before you start talking. So what I want you to do is I want you to roll your finger forward or move forward in the video clip to the moment before you start talking. Yeah. So find that. Okay. Now, when you're happy, you found that spot. Tap on the clip here. See the way my clip is suddenly highlighted because I tapped on it. I'll tap off and I'll tap back on it, yeah? So I've tapped on it. So down the bottom, there's a there should be something that says split. Yeah. Yeah, so hit that. Okay, and what it does is it creates a little island, okay? So now you've put a little incision between the two things. And if anyone's familiar with video editing, this is very much the digital equivalent of taking a roll of film and cutting it with a scissors how they used to edit film years ago. You cut it with the scissors, you cut out frames, you remove stuff, but really all you're doing is cutting into a roll of film with, with scissors, okay? Now we don't want the opening two or three or four seconds of silence, okay? So tap on the front part. See the way that now the front part is the only part that's highlighted, yeah? And he, go to the bin down the bottom, it should say delete. Sorry, uh, Robert, you, you mentioned the first thing was about the clip. Where, where was that? Just to, I've got yeah, the line. Okay. So I'll do it again. So you see the way I've stopped at a certain point on yep. the clip, yeah? Yep. I've highlighted it here. Down the bottom, there's a word that says split. Uh, Got edit and audio and text. <clears throat> yeah, on the left, it's edit just before the audio. Okay, yeah. Oh, and the split, yeah, gotcha. It's split. Okay, now you should be able to tap on the front part and it should just highlight that. Yeah. And then delete it. And delete is a bin button. It's in the bottom menu. So delete that. So now you would have gotten rid of the five seconds of silence at the start. So then what you do is you scroll all the way to the end of your video and you find the five seconds at the end 
where you stop talk. Okay. And you do the exact same thing. You tap on it. You find split. You create your little gap. You tap on the part you don't want. And you delete it. Delete that as well. Okay. So now you should have a clean clip that's gotten rid of your silence at the start and the end. Okay. And this is a really easy way of editing. Okay. Because what I want to do now is I just want to add in the stuff you were talking about. So, um, is Chris, yeah, Christine. So in the case of you, how did your, Christine, how did your video start? What was the first thing you said? Honestly, it was me saying something about what, something that I had in my room and then saying that I had a paperweight in my, in my office room. Okay, cool. So we'll use you as an example. So what I would do then is I would scroll forward in your video to just before you say, I have a paperweight in my room. Yeah. Yeah. And I would stop. And down the bottom, there's a little menu button that says overlay. Can anyone see that? So if you click on overlay, it'll say add overlay. <laughs> and what that does is it brings you back into your folder. And Christine, to use you as an example, find the first video clip where it, you said paperweight. Yeah, and add it, okay? And what you should do, what you should get is a video now sitting on top of your video. Do I add one of the paperweight videos in the overlay? Do you add what? Uh, one of the paperweight videos in the overlay. Yeah. yeah, just add one of the paperweight videos, whichever one you want, just add it, okay? And it will sit now on top of your image like this. Okay, I see that. Yep. So it might be the right, is it the wrong size or is it the right size? It's a, it's a little bit smaller than the original. Okay, so what you do is tap on the actual video in the image. See the image at the top? Yes. So tap on it and it should have little green lines around it, yeah? Yeah. And pull it with your fingers. So you see the way I'm making a big mine bigger? Yes. Okay. I've just, uh, yep, I've got it to over, overlay the entire uh, other video. Yeah. So now when you press playback on your video, you're still talking, but it will cut to the video clip on top with you talking underneath. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now what you want to do is you want to say to yourself, okay, that's too long. Okay. So we do the exact same process as before. We want to make, now we want to make our overlay clip shorter. OK, so all you do is highlight it like I've done on my screen. Go back down to your button down the bottom and it's split it again. Yeah, and I'm going to delete the end of this. So now when my video plays, it goes like this. That's very short, but. Suddenly you're able to now start adding clips on top. So you're still talking. So the audience is hearing what you're saying, but they're seeing something else. Okay. So has anyone not done that? Yeah, I can't find overlay. Is it different on Apple or Android? Uh, oh, I can't tell on my- it Like should... on the bottom of mine is like canvas mixer text. Yeah. Have you got, hold up your, do, 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 do. no, it should be, can, can you go far all the way over to the left hand side? Yeah, it'll, Because you've yeah, that's as far left as it goes. Um, oh, I have to look at my Android. I have to look at my, my iPhone's connected. It should be there. It should be the same menu for each. Yeah. Because they've changed just... something. I had it. I had to like press a little arrow on the left. Like there was like a little arrow at the left of the issue, the things, and then it's yeah. That's the... just undo though. And yeah. then is there not double, the no, there's no like little double arrows, no. No. Okay. Well, I, find I, you, do... I find if you click on a different section of the video, yes. it gives you a different menu. Okay. Either. Yeah, it might be. I'll send you a screenshot from the the uh, iPhone. I got you. Okay, hang on. Then I've got filters. I think you have to select. I think you have to select the the reel that you're looking at. Yeah, I 
my internet connection is unstable. I think everybody says it's this rather. Yeah, I think it's the Listen, don't worry about me. I'll figure oh. it out. I, like, okay. yeah, don't worry so, about me. So, well, you wanna... <clears throat> Robert, sorry, could I just interrupt? Um, I got the overlay, and then how did you kind of cut it uh, to say two seconds? Uh... So, have you got? Can you see the overlay sitting on my screen here? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the, you see this here? So it's yeah. the exact same as before. Okay. Tap okay. on the part of the overlay where you want it to end. Yeah. Go to split. Uh, okay. And then delete it. And now there's a strip that sits on top of my video, but it's not. Okay. It should just end. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, guys, if you, want, if you want to make that longer or shorter, just highlight it. And you see the way there's two little kind of long lines at the end, block lines at the end. You can actually just pull that out with your finger. Yeah. So what you would do is you would go to your video. I'm not going to do it now, but you can keep adding clips on top of where you're talking. And what that does is it shows what you're talking about. It makes it more interesting to look at and also kind of breaks up your video. And the trick in the first four seconds of your video or three or four seconds or start with that clip, because again, it's about capturing some of the tension. And if the video starts with just me talking like this, by the time it gets to your first clip, somebody could have lost interest and moved on. So that's the experimentation part is finding what works and what doesn't. But if I was to start with, hi, my name is Rob, and then cut straight into that clip, I can catch somebody and they'll see the clip change and they'll be like, oh, wait, this is, there's something to hold my attention. So what I would say is, there's only, I can only go through so much in, in the short time, but the one other thing I would say is if you go to the bottom menu, it says text. Yeah. If you click on text, you should get a menu here. It says add text, text template, auto captions, auto lyrics. Okay. If we want to add text, I'm just going to manually type in my name here. Okay. And with my finger, I'm going to move it down to the bottom right-hand side. Now, there's a whole text menu. If you highlight it, you can go in and you can make all manner of changes to the font and the text and all that sort of stuff. And let's just change the style. Ferrari, all these styles come with it. Say X. There. So. Now I have text says my name. So you can start adding in text if you want, you can do it that way. I won't spend because I'm conscious of the time and, and, and I, I know that people have things to do and, and, and to get around it, but you can have a play around with that afterwards. Again, you're always doing the same thing. You're just adding extra layers. When I say layer, basically you've got your main video and then a layer is a sticker and any it's anything you place on top of your video. So the first clip we put on is a sticker. The text is a sticker and it just means it sits on top of your main video and whatever stickers are on your main video, the audience sees. OK, so the text, I added a sticker text there so that it sits on top. OK, so when we're happy with our video, you just go up to the top right hand side of it and you will see something that says. I think he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the yeah. auto captions are amazing. The auto captions are brilliant. And the one thing I would say is guys, don't post anything. LinkedIn, I think does auto captions now. I know Facebook does. Don't post anything on social media unless you caption it because A, for accessibility purposes and B, it's the final hurdle. And uh, again, it's an extra way for people to understand what it is you're talking about uh, because most of the time they're gonna be consuming it with the sound off. So you can have a play around with that app. It's pretty robust. Uh, it's also got an incredible desktop version that's free. So you can actually edit on your desktop for free. It's the exact same as the app. What I would say is if anyone is scared or unfamiliar with editing, editing is the same regardless of what platform you use. It gets more complicated because there's more to do. But essentially, if you can edit on your phone, you can edit anywhere because the logic is always the same regardless of what software you use. It's always cut clips, bin clips, all this sort of stuff. The only difference is, is when you're using something like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, there's basically the only limit to your editing is your imagination. Uh, you can effectively do whatever you want uh, if you can think of it and the quality of your footage can withstand 
the amount of uh, stuff you're doing to it. But that's a story for another day. I'm very conscious of the time. Um, but, uh, so does anyone have any questions? That's a very whistle-stop tour of, of everything, okay? That's like a very quick introduction on how to do it. Uh, what I would say is, uh, if anyone is interested in learning more, I have classes next week with ISMI, I think it's next week with ISMI um, SkillsNet in and around, but it's more around uh, correct social media management. So it's, it's, it's kind of how to post things correctly, why you should post things, where you should post things, how to store stuff, how to crop stuff, all that sort of stuff. So it's really about a kind of effectively putting together decent social media rather than just say dumping a video on YouTube and sharing the link on LinkedIn, which is a big no, don't do that. Um, but uh, uh, so does anyone have any questions for me? I have a question very quickly, Rob. Um, yes, go for it. Could you drop us a link as to how, how we can access those SkillNet courses when you get a chance? I can and I will. Yeah, that's no problem. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the 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 Slack channel for Ireland Together as well. Um, yeah, perfect. Here somewhere. Yeah, I'll pop it in there. I'll, I'd say a little bit later today because I have to run back at the door. Um, but I have it. Yeah, no, I have it here. Um, I'll pop it in there now. And someone so, else had a had a question there. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. Uh. Robert, just how how would you finish the video? Um. Is there a finish. technique to kind of just to finish it off rather than it just cuts to your good question? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, generally, it depends on the story. You got to always think of stuff from the perspective of a story. OK, so regardless yeah. of whatever you're doing, what's the start, middle and the end? I, I was I talking about my cup. So, uh, there you OK, go. <laughs> so, I mean, if I was to tell a story about your cup, yeah. uh, I would probably end it in uh, either showing you putting it in the dishwasher or cleaning it excessively oh, yeah, okay. uh, or knocking it off the table and accidentally breaking it. But that's kind of more storytelling elements to go into it. What I would say is how I generally shoot videos very quickly is, and the one I did, Louise, the one I did for the Ireland Together event is, is pretty thing. I basically went in and shot a bunch of random footage. Then I went back to my car. I thought about it and I went back to my car and I shot me talking to camera because I already knew the stuff I had. So I shot me talking to camera and then I just inserted a bunch of footage over it to turn it into kind of a story. So it was basically like, I'm really excited about going to a uh, network or whatever. I'm going to meet loads of people. Oh, you know, that was a great success uh, job done. Now I have to go home. But I filmed all that together. I just sat in my car and recorded all of them and go. How you would end it is really have to start thinking about storytelling. And you really have to start thinking about what the impact you want to have. If you're talking to the camera, I would probably end it with some sort of call to action because you want people to drive to somewhere else. So, hey, check out this or go look at that. But the other thing I would say is if you're doing a storytelling element of it, I would have a think about what I want to happen. Do I want it to end with a joke? Would I love to be like, I absolutely love coffee. And then it shows you breaking your coffee cup or it shows you burning yourself a coffee. That would be a funny kind of way to end. Um, you know, you burn yourself and then you go, God damn it, I love it anyway. And then your video ends. But that requires a bit of thought and a bit of thinking in terms of, of, of what you're trying to say and how you're trying to say it. But you're dead right. I wouldn't just end willy nilly. I wouldn't be like, I love coffee. The end. Um, because that's great. But what value does that give to the viewer? It's like, cool. I know that Brian loves coffee, but, you know, sweet. Let me run out and buy whatever Brian is doing. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's you always got to put yourself in your audience's perspective and ask yourself, what do you respond to online? Because oftentimes we enjoy certain content and then we go to make it ourselves. We, we don't. So if you respond to something, if something works with you, keep hold of it, recognize it, put it to one side and say, why do I like this? And how do I, how can I emulate? And I wouldn't be so concerned about, I wouldn't be so precious. There's no such thing as original thought. Everybody's copying something from somewhere. So if you can find something that you like, find a way to make it your own. Okay. Any more questions? Sorry. Again. Yeah, it's not related to this discussion, but do you do kind of animation videos as well? They're becoming, I believe they can be becoming a little bit easier to do, or is that a completely different sort of uh, You mean do them yourself? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, there is apps. I do animation, uh, animated explainers. I build them. Um, I, there is apps you can get. There is services you can pay for. To be honest with you, like, I don't know about you, I, my eye rolls every time I see that black and white pencil thing. I don't know if you know it, because mm -hmm. that's a wow. that's a very cheap service that they that they can get done. And that's grand. If, if you want to throw something out, that's fine. But at the same time, generally an animated explainer is something that someone's posting on their website because they wanted to explain a complex thing to a 
people who are coming to the website. And in that case, I'd pay for it. I'd pay for it to be done well because there's a dip, there's a huge difference between lashing something out. A lot of the times, what we're talking about here is disposable content that's designed mm -hmm. to give people a flavor for who you are and what it is you do. Yeah. And if you do it enough times, it combines into a larger image of you. Yeah. Uh, if you start banging out kind of cheapy animated explainers, you can 100% do that if you want, but it depends on why you're doing it and where you're putting it. And it's not yeah. the kind of stuff I put on a, on a website because it, 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 whenever I see that sketchy thing, I'm like, this tells me something about this business straight away but i mean it's really outdated please don't absolutely it's yes. so outdated Eva, Eva, you're better you're better and more blunt than i would be uh, I would <laughs> please don't do us don't, don't do, do it. And also really i would focus very much on what it is you're trying to say and um, because that's where a lot of people fall down they're like cool i get a cheap animated video done and then it doesn't follow a flow or a structure and it's not really identifying customer pain points so it ends up just being something nobody wants to watch yeah. cool Thanks. Perfect. All right, guys, I'm going to leg it. Uh, what I would say is I'll pop that ISME thing in the events chat on the Slack. If I do it now, if I remember to do it now, I'll do it now. Um, and then uh, hopefully I can see you guys. I think it's next week. It's very early. It's 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. each day. And you can sign up for different ones. We focus on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook, I think. So um, you can check it that out. Uh, it's less about the it's less about the how and very much about the why. Um, and I think if you can crack the why uh, and you're vaguely interested in the how, then the two of them will come together um, pretty easily. But a lot of times people skip over the, I'm making videos. And I have a very funny anecdote, which I can't tell about a guy. Actually, I'll say it. I knew a guy worked for Tidy Towns and I showed him how to make a lot of videos and he was using a free editing app. And he came back to me, he's like, Rob, I don't understand why people aren't watching my videos. Um, and what he was basically doing was he was shooting footage and then throwing it into an app that was basically churning out what I can only describe as early 90s techno dance music videos. And he was like, I don't understand why people aren't responding to my edits. And I was like, well, who do you think the ideal audience is for Titan? <laughs> and I'm like, well, uh, they're probably about 65 and up. It's like, do you think they want to watch like nausea inducing, seizure inducing techno videos? And I'm like, no, well, that's your problem. You know what I mean? Just because you know how to do something doesn't mean you know why you're doing it. And it's very important to understand why is my, my long story short. Thank you so much, Rob, honestly, for no your worries. time. Really, really good. No worries, guys. Uh, okay, cool. I'm going to let it back. Um, Thanks so much, Robert. Okay, guys. I'll see you later on. Yeah. Really good. Thank you no so worries. much.